Hi ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be reviewing area and perimeter for your quiz coming up. So let's start by going over some formulas to find the area or the perimeter of different shapes. So we're going to start with number one to find the perimeter of a square. To find the perimeter of a square we can add up the four sides, so side plus side plus side plus side, or that's the same thing as multiplying the side length times four, so 4s. For number two to find the area of a square we would multiply the side length times the side length, so s times s, or that's the same thing as side squared. Number three, to find the perimeter of a rectangle, we could add up the length plus the width, plus the length plus the width, or two times the length plus two times the width. Number four, the area of a rectangle is length times width, Number five, to find the area of a trapezoid, we would have base one plus base two divided by two. Remember that's the average of the two bases multiplied by the height. The area of a triangle could be one half times the base times the height or base times height divided by two. The last one here, number seven, the area of a parallel parallelogram is base times the height. Or BH. All right, let's take a look at question number eight. We want to find the area and the perimeter of the triangle. To find the area of the triangle, we need to know what the base and the height are, and they should be perpendicular to each other. So we have, let's see if I could draw it in here. There we go. The base here is 20, and the height is 15. Those two are perpendicular to each other. So we're going to multiply 20 times 15 and then divide it by 2, or a half times 20 times 15. 20 times 15 is 300, and 300 divided by 2 is 150. So the area is 150 feet squared. To find the perimeter, we need to add up all the sides that are on the outside of the triangle. So we're going to start with 20. We're going to add 17 to it, and then 16. Notice the 15 inside is not used because that is not part of the perimeter, the distance around. All right, so 20 plus 17 is 37, and 37 plus 16 is 53. So the perimeter is 53 feet. And sorry, I put an A here. That should have been a P for perimeter. All right, so there's our triangle. Let's go on to number 10. Now we're looking at a trapezoid. We want to find the area and perimeter of the trapezoid. To find the area, we need to identify what the bases are and what the height is. I'm going to restate the formula here, base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. Remember, that's the average of the two bases. Then we're going to multiply it by the height. All right, so the two bases are parallel to each other. So base 1 is 32 and base 2 is 24. You could switch those around. You could have listed base 1 as 24, base 2 as 32. That's fine. And the height is perpendicular, so that's 11. It forms a 90 degree angle with the bases. So now I'm going to substitute those numbers in. We have 32 plus 24. Then we're going to divide it by 2. We're going to multiply it by the height of 11. So 32 plus 24 is 56. We're going to take 56 and divide it by 2, then multiply it by 11. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So you have 28 times 11, and that gives an area of 308. And that's millimeters squared. All right, now we're on to number 11 to find the perimeter. We need to add up all of the sides. So I'm going to start on the side here where the 13 is and move in a clockwise fashion. Next one would be 24, then 17, and last is the 32. So I'm going to group these. I know 13 plus 17 is 30, and 24 plus 32 is 56. 
And then we're going to add those two together to give us 86 millimeters. So the perimeter is 86 millimeters. All right, next we're on to our square. We want to find the area of the square. We said the area of the square is side times side. And since the side lengths are the same, I'm going to substitute in here 4 and 2 thirds times 4 and 2 thirds. All right, we, before we can multiply, we have to change those to improper fractions. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So that's 14 thirds times 14 thirds. I can't do any cross reducing, so we're going to multiply across. So that's 196 over 9, and then 196 divided by 9, changing it to a mixed number, would be 21 and 7 ninths. So our area is 21 and 7 ninths, and that's feet squared. For the perimeter, we can add up the four sides, 4 and 2 thirds plus 4 and 2 thirds plus 4 and 2 thirds plus 4 and 2 thirds, or multiply 4 and 2 thirds times 4. It's a little faster to do the multiplication, so I'll do it this way. We said 4 and 2 thirds was the same thing as 14 thirds. Can't do any cross reducing here either, so we're going to multiply across. 14 times 4 is 56. And 56 over 3 is 18 and 1 third. So our perimeter is 18 and 1 third feet. Sorry, my mistake. It should have been 18 and 2 thirds. The remainder is 2. All right, let's move on. Okay, so now we're looking at a rectangle. So we have a rectangle here. To find the area, we're going to multiply the length times the width. The length is 5 and 2 fifths. The width is 6 and a half. And again, we need to change those to improper fractions to be able to multiply. So this is 27 fifths. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. And 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. I don't see that we can cross reduce here, so we're going to multiply across. 27 times 13 gives us 351. And 5 times 2 is 10. Let's change that to a mixed number. 10 goes into 351 35 times with one remainder. So our area is 35 and 1 tenth centimeters squared. And for the perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides here. Or 2 times the length. So 2 times 5 and 2 fifths plus 2 times 6 and 1 half. So we're going to multiply here. That's 2 times 27 fifths. That would give us 54 fifths. And 2 times 13 over 2. I can cross reduce here. So that would give us 13. Let's change that 54 fifths over to a mixed number. That would be 10 and 4 fifths. We're going to add that to 13. So that's going to give us a perimeter of 23 and 4 fifths centimeters. Now you could have changed these values, the 5 and 2 fifths, into decimal form. 5 and 4 tenths and 6 and a half into 6 and 5 tenths and then use those values instead. That would have given you a decimal value for the area of 35.1 or 35 and 1 tenth centimeters squared. Or for your perimeter, if you added those together, it would have given you 23.8 or 23 and 8 tenths. Okay, so now let's take a look at our parallelogram. To find the area of a parallelogram, we're going to multiply the base times the height. The base here is 18 and 9 tenths. And the height is perpendicular. It's this 7 and uh, 7 and a half, 7.5. 
So we're going to multiply those two together. That gives us a product of 141 and 75 hundredths centimeters squared for our area. For the perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides. So I'm going to fill that in. We have 18 and 9 tenths on the bottom, 18 and 9 tenths on the top. On the left is 13 centimeters. On the right would also be 13 centimeters. So our perimeter is 18.9 times 2 plus 13 times 2. 18.9 times 2 is 37.8 or 37 and 8 tenths and 13 times 2 is 26. And that gives us a perimeter of 63 and 8 tenths centimeters. Okay, in question 18, we're given the width of the rectangle, which is 1 and 8 tenths, and we're given the area of 41 and 4 tenths, and we need to find what the length is. So I'm going to substitute the numbers I know into the formula area equals length times width. Our area, we said, was 41 and 4 tenths. We don't know the length. We know the width is 1 and 8 tenths. To find the length, we're going to divide both sides by 1 and 8 tenths. This looks like a one-step equation. All right, and when we divide that, we end up with a length of 23. So the length is 23 meters. All right, next, we have a triangle here. We're given the base of 12 meters, and it says find the height of the triangle if the area is 48. So we're looking for the height over here. I'm going to use the formula area equals base times height divided by 2, and I'm going to substitute what we know in the area is 48. The base is 12. We don't know the height, and we know we have to divide it by 2. All right, so I'm going to work backwards here. Since I know the base times the height divided by 2 has to equal 48, uh, I'm going to multiply 48 times 2 because then I know the product of 12 times the height has to be the same as 2 times 48, which is 96. So I'm looking for a number that multiplies with 12 to give 96. Right? That number has to be 8. So the height is 8. And let's just test it out one more time. If I substitute it in, base times height divided by 2, the base is 12, the height is 8, and when we divide it by 2, will it be 48? 12 times 8 is 96, and 96 divided by 2 is 48. So it checks out. That means the height is 8 meters. And you can use some trial and error here to test it out, put different numbers in. Let's say we started with a height of 10. 10 times 12 is 120. 120 divided by 2 is 60. So that area of 60 is too big. I need to bring my guess down from 10. And you can keep going with trial and error that way. Next one. Find the side length of the square if the area is 6.25 centimeters. So we know the area of a square is side times side. So we're going to substitute in 6.25, and we want to figure out what is the side length. So it has to be some number that when it multiplies to itself gives 6.25. Dividing by 2 doesn't help me here because I'm not multiplying the side length times 2. So we could do some trial and error here. I know the side length has to be bigger than 2 has to be bigger than 2 because 2 times 2 is 4, right? If I substituted 2 in for the side lengths, that would be 4, and that area is too small. I know the side length has to be smaller than 3. S has to be smaller than 3 because if I substituted the side length of 3 in here, 3 times 3 would give 9, and that area is too big. So it's probably somewhere in the middle. Let's see if the side length is 2.5. 
2.5 times 2.5. Let's find that product. It's 25. Carry the 2. Uh, that's 10 plus 2 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. And 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So we have 5, 2, 6. Two decimal place values in the factors. That means we need 2 in the product. So when we multiply 2.5 times 2.5, the area is 6.25. So that means the side length has to be 2.5 centimeters. So we used a little trial and error and common sense to figure out what the side length would be. Okay, the next one, we want to find the area and the perimeter of this composite figure. Okay, so our next question, we want to find the area and the perimeter of the composite figure. Let's start with the perimeter. To find the perimeter, we need the side lengths of all of the sides. So let's take a look. We're missing the left-hand side here. To find the left-hand side, I'm going to draw in another line here. I know that this right piece is 2. I blocked off the number, sorry. Uh, so this right piece is 2. That means opposite sides are equal. That piece there is 2. And when I add the 2 plus the 4 here together, that gives a total length of 6. So that means this left-hand side would also be 6. Okay, so let me erase what I have here already, make some space. Okay, next piece we're missing here is this piece down here. Um, so I notice the top is 4, and if I bring this bottom 2 up to meet our missing piece here, right? I know that it forms a rectangle, and it has to equal 4 because the top is 4. So 2 plus another 2 would give us the total 4. So our missing piece there has to be 2. So I'm just going to clear out my writing here, and then I'll put the 2 in. Okay. So now we can find the perimeter. I'm going to start at 6 and move in a clockwise fashion there. So I have 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2. 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4. Just checking I wrote them all down correctly. All right, now let's add it together. 6 plus 4 is 10, and then we have 12, 14, 16, 16 plus 4 would give us 20. So the perimeter here is 20 centimeters. Now let's move on to the area. So I'm going to erase the work um, right here and over here, my lines. We said this piece here was 2. And now I'm going to split it up into two rectangles, a top rectangle and a bottom rectangle. Top rectangle, uh, the dimensions of that are a length of 4 and a width of 2. So the area of the top would be 4 times 2, which is 8. And the area of the bottom, the length is 2 and the width is 4. So also an area of 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Then we're going to add those two areas together to give us a total area of 16 centimeters squared. All right, in question number 22, we want to find the area of the shaded region. To find the area of the shaded region, we're going to find the area of the larger rectangle on the outside. And then we're going to subtract the area of the smaller rectangle inside. So the area of the larger rectangle is 20 times 18. 18 is our length, 20 is the width, and that's 360. And then the area of the smaller one, the length is 12 and the width is 8. So 12 times 8 would give us an area of 96. And then the last step is to subtract those two. So that should give us an area of 264 meters squared. All right, another let's find the area of the shaded region. So we're going to find the area of the square first. Then we're going to subtract the area of the triangle from it. All right, so my side length, side lengths for the square is 30. So the area of the square is 30 times 30 or 900. 
and the area of the triangle, the base is 17 and the height is 20. So we have 17 times 20 divided by 2. Well, 17 times 20 is 340, and 340 divided by 2 is 170. So now we have 900 minus 170. That would give us an area of 730. And that would be inches squared. All right, if you have any questions, tune into the call or uh, email me with any questions that you have. All right, speak to you guys soon. Bye bye.